to another episode of Metal, Meeples, and Beer. I am Rob himself, and in today's episode, I'm going to be doing another Rob review. And today I've selected Saloon Tycoon from Van Ryder Games, along with their ranch expansion, which I recently got off of Kickstarter. Uh, but before I get to any of that, I am definitely having a beer. And today, I'm going to be having the Hands Up Red Ale from Tin Whistle Brewing in beautiful Penticton, BC. While I'm drinking some of that, will be serenaded by my boys in Dead Quiet, a badass band from Vancouver, BC. I've got to see them recently two or three times, and every time they blow me away. They have an incredible live show. If you ever have the chance to see these guys, go and do it. They're incredible. So, uh, without further ado, while I get this game set up, uh, sit back, relax, grab yourself a pint, join me at the table as we take a look at Saloon Tycoon from Van Ryder Games. Cheers! Okay, well let's just jump right into it here. Uh, this is Saloon Tycoon. This is just the core game. I thought I would talk about the core game before I got into the uh, the ranch expansion because it's kind of a lot to take in right off the bat and it wouldn't really fit on my uh, camera. As you can kind of see, I've got it really congested. This isn't what it would look like. Uh, this is just what I would had to do for my, my camera's sake, okay? so. Um, yeah, but to begin the game, it's, it's basically taking place uh, during a gold rush in uh, an, uh, a budding little town, a uh, mining town, so we're competing saloons. Like, I'll have my uh, saloon on my player board here, and someone would have a player board across the table with their own saloon. And we're competing for business, for travelers, uh, citizens, outlaws, people to come and, and stay at our saloon, drink at our saloon, party at our saloon, all those fun things. That's the basics of the game. Uh, each player starts with their own player board, just like this, and a saloon, matching saloon of their color. And it goes right in this corner here where it says saloon, okay? Uh, it also, they also start with their own meeples, a little meeple for the scoring track, which is this board here, and then an income meeple down here at the bottom. And your income, it's always important to know, it's a really nice feature of this game, it's really simple. Uh, your income is always equal to the amount of tiles that you have on your player board. So if you have one tile, you have one income. It's that simple. Really great. Um, yeah, so there are other parts of this game. The, the cool thing about this game is that it does have kind of a ticking clock. And that's these brown resource cubes here. Um, for a uh, two-player game, you would have 40 cubes. Uh, for a three-player game, you'd have 60. And for a four-player game, you'd have 80 cubes. And once these run out, the end of the game triggers, and there's one more round, and that's the end of the game. So, uh, at the beginning of the game, everyone has kind of dealt out some cards. There's tycoon cards, there's open claims, and there's secret claims. So we'll, the, each player will get three tycoon cards. Those are action cards, generally speaking. Um, there are secret claims, which are uh, objectives that are secret only to the player that has them that they're trying to accomplish through the game to score some victory points and there's also some open claims which are the same thing but they're open to everybody they'll be spread out on the board and I believe it's four of them will be spread out on the board for everyone to uh, to try and claim uh, through the game try to score the victory points that are associated with that card so um, going through what we kind of do here is there's a few different things. If on the first of your step, or your first step is to do the uh, income step, which you just simply get gold equal to your income. So if you have one tile out, you have one meeple on your income track on number one, you get one gold nugget, okay? That's simple. The second part is just to do your action steps. And in this step, there's several things you can do, including earning two gold, so you could just take two gold from the supply and add it to your your uh, your uh, your money pool. Um, you could also draw two tycoon cards. You can only ever have five. Okay, you can you start with three, but you could draw two and get yourself up to five. So here's some examples of what these cards do. Uh, for instance, this one's a gold rush. If you uh, were to play one of these cards, which is another action you can do. This would simply give you eight gold nuggets, and all other players would earn two gold nuggets. So, you know, it's a net six, sort of. You get eight, they get two, okay? So that's another action, is playing a tycoon card. There's also building a tile. So, 
There's all these tiles here that we can choose from. And these all represent different rooms that we will be putting into our, our saloon and surrounding area. So for instance, if you wanted to build, um, let's say you wanted to build the kitchen. You would have to pay four gold. And this shows you the bonus that you'd be getting after you complete the construction of this kitchen. So if you paid your four gold from your supply, you'd be able to put this down wherever you like, starting beside, adjacent to your saloon. So you could either start here or start here. You could not start here. You'd have to build here or here first. So let's say I built it here. You'd be able to build here for free and here for free. Once we start building out, these are gonna get more expensive. So in, in addition to the cost of four uh, gold nuggets, I would have to pay an additional two once I get to this spot. But I'd also be getting an, uh, a victory point instantly for building there. But we're not there yet, so I would build, say, the kitchen right here. And that I paid my four gold for. And that's, that's how you put out a building, or uh, you know, a, uh, a tile. But it's basically another building or an expansion onto your, your saloon. Another thing you can do is bribe a character. So the bribing of characters is really cool. We haven't really talked about the characters, but these characters are what are the people that are, are being attracted to your, your saloon. So for various reasons, these people are gonna start visiting, visiting your saloon. For instance, the sheriff here, Sheriff Reeves, uh, he goes to the player who finishes the jail. So the first person to build the jail which is over here, and I should say that there are some tiles that there are only one of. These are special tiles. For instance, the jail, the stables, the schoolroom, the luxury suite, theater, whiskey still, brothel, and printing press are all single tiles, so only one player is ever going to be able to get one of those. But the first person that did build, for instance, the jail, paid their 10 gold, and also had a poker room, as you can see here, you'd have to have 10 gold to pay, plus you'd also already have to have a poker room built. And then you could build this jail. And if you did build it, the bonus is that once you complete building it, you'd get Sheriff Reeves. And at the end of the game, if he's at your saloon, he's worth five victory points. It's that simple. But what I was getting to earlier is that there's an action you can take in which you can bribe these characters. You can bribe, the, bribe them to either leave your saloon if they're you know being a pain because some of these guys aren't great to have around or you can bribe them to come to your uh, saloon if there's someone that you really need and maybe a combo is with something you're trying to do um, so yeah you can pay six gold as an action to bribe them to either come or go depending on what way you're leaning and if this person is going to help you or not uh, and there's also a few free actions you can do like staking a claim for instance you could uh, you could claim one of your claim cards. Let's take a look at one here. There we go, this one. Called Monopoly. So this would be one of the secret claims. All you would have to do is have four common tiles of any type, and then you can score this card for eight victory points. You would just set it aside and score eight victory points at the end of the game. Um, so that's a secret, or a... Uh, a free action you can do with one of your secret claims. You could also do it on one of the open claims, so one of the ones that are open to everyone to see. You could just claim that and get those victory points. And the last um, free action you can do is supplying your tiles. So this is how you start building and completing your rooms. So now that I've got the kitchen out here, I can pay two gold per brown cube here. So I could pay six gold to put these out. And I could put one there, one there, and one there. The second that I've done that, that room is now complete. And I get the bonus that's associated with that. So as we saw before, on the other side of the kitchen, when I've built the kitchen, I get a free action here, this green arrow. And that means to play a tycoon card. So the second, that I have completed this room, I can instantly play a Tycoon card if I wish. And yeah, that's, that's how that kind of works. 
And now, on the next turn, when it comes around to me, if I want to build another building and I had enough gold to do so, for instance, if I did have the requirements to build the jail, I could start building the jail on top. And this is where the game starts getting really interesting. It can pile up, it can go vertical rather than just horizontal. And you can go up three stories with these, these rooms. Um, and that's a really cool aspect of the game. It's something I haven't really seen before. It's really neat, um, and I, I really enjoyed that part of it. And once you've done three stories, you can actually add a roof to it. And you just get four victory points for basically capping off a building. So I can show you kind of what that would look like. Oops. Have that like that. That on there. Some more cubes there. And then we could have built, say, a pantry on top of there. And build up with more cubes. And cap it off with a roof. And there are lots of ways that these rooms start to combo with each other. For instance, with a lot of the different characters, they say that you need to have certain rooms in your on your player board for him to be there. And if he is there, it'll combo with whatever room you have to give you more victory points, things like that. So that's generally how the game works. And you keep doing these actions over and over and over again until all these brown cubes have run out. The second they have, uh, the game it goes into the, the end end trigger and it uh, goes one more round where you can now have access to as many cubes as you want and everyone can try and maximize what they have left uh, whether it's trying to get rid of a, a citizen or you know an outlaw something like that or building another room or completing another room just trying to get one of your secret claims to work out or one of the open claims uh, those are the type of things that you're trying to do and at the end of the game the person with the most victory points that's moved along this track wins the game and yeah it's it's that simple it's a really cool game it's really rather simple um, with a cool theme um, I always love Wild West type stuff um, so this is yeah it's right up my alley I really love the uh, the stacking so you can go vertical not just horizontal and there's there's lots of different ways to to victory in this game I've, I've seen us our three players you know take completely different strategies some people were only on the base floor some people just had towers it was really interesting um yeah so that's kind of how it works hopefully that makes sense i'm gonna have a sip of my beer here in a minute and i'm gonna get the uh the ranch expansion set up so i'm gonna clear out a few things here just to show you that and then yeah after we look at the ranch expansion we'll take a look at uh my final thoughts so yeah i'm gonna have a dr uh, drink here and uh We'll be back shortly. Cheers. Okay, well here we have the ranch expansion for Saloon Tycoon. Um, let's quickly go over um, what we added. But before I get to there, there's one major thing I left out for from the, uh, the last uh, side of the video. Was how much each one of these tiles is worth scoring. I um, mean, I didn't even mention uh, what they're worth to, to get our, our victory points, as it were. So, you know kind of a major goof on my end, but better late than never. Um, so for every large tile that we score, we're gonna finish, or, or by scoring it, I mean finishing it. So we can play it, build it like that, but we'd have to finish it with these four cubes, right? To consider it complete. Once it's complete, we will get the, the bonus uh, that is shown on each tile, as well as seven victory points. So for a large tile, we'd get seven victory points. For a small tile, um, we would get five, okay? So that's good to know. Something I left out, sorry about that. But again, better late than never. Seven victory points, small tiles, five victory points after they're complete. And that's with all the cubes on them, okay? So let's get past that and talk about what the, uh, the ranch expansion uh, adds to it. So we add another player board, uh, the ranch player board. Uh, the same color, as you can see, I always like to play red, so that's why I'm using red. Um, we start off with a ranch house, right there. 
We start with another meeple down here at the bottom, what's called the ranch points. And uh, yeah, our income would actually be bumped up to two to start the game because we have one tile here and one tile here. So that's still the same rule, okay? So our income would start at two in this, in this scenario. Um, it also adds that, uh, oh yeah, so we add a whole bunch more open claims, uh, secret claims, and typhoon, or typhoon, tycoon cards to be shuffled into the original decks. Just add a little bit more variety to the game and uh, adds in more uh, in depth to this uh, expansion itself to do with the ranch. It also adds a few more characters. It adds in a female outlaw, Hawkeye Harriet. Okay. It also adds in ranch hands, which are able to be acquired. Um, and these guys will give you victory points at the end of the game. Okay. There's four of them to be had. Each player is also going to be shuffled, or uh, is also going to be shuffled, additional ranch house tiles. So there's, I believe, eight of them. So every player is going to get two of them at random, which are different things that you can add to your ranch itself. Okay, and these can only go on your ranch. They can't be going on this side of the board. Only on this side of the board. For instance, I was given the storeroom and the workshop. Okay, you're also dealt two additional animal pens, a bunkhouse, and there are different little meeples here. There's horse pieces, cows, water troughs, and a different colored building block that are specific to only building on the, the ranch tiles, okay? And each player is dealt 12 of these at the beginning of the, of the game. Okay, so how does this all work? Well, this side of the game will still function just as normal, but the ranch is everything to do with these ranch points. So at the beginning of every turn, the player would get their income. So gold equal to whatever their income is, which is equal to how many tiles they have. So in this instance, two. Oops, sorry about that. And then they would go up by one ranch point and only one ranch point. So every turn you're gonna increase that by one ranch point, okay? And these ranch points are what you spend to get these additional um, tiles. For instance, if you wanna build another animal pen, you'd have to have six ranch points to spend and you could get this animal pen. This is actually an animal pen as well. So at the beginning of the game, you actually have an animal pen to start with and it can hold four animals, uh, horses or cows, okay? So the big, the main things that this adds to the game are, are three additional free actions. So I'll just run over what all the actions are to begin with. So the main actions you have are earning two gold, which you just take from the supply. You can build a tile, which is here, right? Um, you can draw two tycoon cards. You can play a tycoon card, or you can bribe a character. Those are the main actions, but then there's the free actions. So again, the free actions were staking an open claim. So you could try and claim the requirements to uh, score one of these open claim cards. Same thing with a secret claim that you might have. And there are, what else do we have? Supply your tiles, which is playing the cubes, right? To fulfill, to complete a room, which are two, uh, two gold nuggets apiece. Um, you can discard ty Tycoon cards now. So this is a, a new free action you can do. So for every Tycoon card that you discard out of your hand, you are going to raise your ranch points. If you discarded five cards, you're going to be up at six ranch points at this point. Okay? Um, and then you can also sell animals, which, so if you had um, a horse here in your pen, you'd be able to sell that horse for three three gold nuggets, okay? And cows, I believe, are worth two. So it's three for a horse and two for a cow, okay? Um, what else can you do? Well, by discarding your tycoon cards, you can raise this up quite quickly, and then you can start to add to your ranch. So you can add additional pens. This would cost you six points, or six, uh, yeah, six ranch points to put in an additional pen. If this one were full, it can only hold four. You could put in another one scoring four points doing so and this would be able to hold two uh, animals 
horse or cow. Same thing, if we did it an additional time, we would be able to put in another pen. And the other thing we were able to do is the bunkhouse. So the bunkhouse will cost us eight um, ranch points, but it, uh, it does a lot for us. So we'd, we'd install the bunkhouse for eight points. If we had eight, we'd go to zero, put in the bunkhouse, and that would get us the top ranch hand available. So these ranch hands, if no one had taken a ranch hand at this point, you'd get the top top guy. Um, and he scores for five victory points at the end of the game. And if not, it would be him for four victory points, uh, three victory points, and two victory points if you're the last guy to get a ranch hand. These guys don't do much for you, uh, except they, they do count towards certain combinations you might have for open claims or secret claims. If you need a male citizen versus a female citizen, they can count towards those type of things. Otherwise, they don't really have an effect. They just give you whatever their victory points are worth at the end of the game. They also cannot be influenced uh, by bribing. So once you have them, they are there for you to stay, okay? They cannot be moved around the board. Um, so, yeah, you can do the same thing. Uh, you can spend, you can do the develop your ranch action and you can spend these points to do those various things. You can buy a cow uh, for three uh, ranch points. You could buy a horse for four. You could put in a water trough for five. And the water troughs, when you add one to one of your pens, it now makes those, whatever you put into the pen, whatever, if it's a horse or a cow, cost one less ranch point every time. Okay, so that would really add up. And you can never, you can only ever have one trough per pen. Um, so you can put in an animal pen, like I said, for six. You can put in the bunkhouse for eight. And you can also finish a ranch tile for 10. So if you had this all the way up at 10, you could spend all 10 and finish this ranch tile. Meaning you'd put out the four cubes on this pen, oh, this pen, on this room, and it is complete. And you would get the bonus that comes from that. In this instance, you would get either a horse or a cow, okay? Now that one's done. Now you're free to build on top of it again, right? So that's generally how it works. It's just, it's just a different little system using the ranch points versus using gold to pay for these uh, these actions. And that's about the, the main differences. Uh, the end scoring, if you have any cows or horses left they are worth something so for every horse you have left you will get two victory points for every cow you have left you'll get one for every water trough you've installed you would get uh, three and for the animal pins you're going to score four the bunkhouse is going to score five and for the ranch hand you're going to get whatever he has in the bottom right here five four three or two and that's generally how this works uh, and it works the same so for every time you finish one of these you're gonna get seven victory points on that track over there and yeah that's that's how it works um, I'm gonna have another sip of my beer I'm gonna tidy this up and then I'm gonna give you uh, my final thoughts on what I thought of Saloon Tycoon and the ranch expansion right cheers guys Well, there you have it, folks. That was Saloon Tycoon from Van Ryder Games, along with the Ranch Expansion. Um, for my final thoughts, I, I really enjoyed this game. I've had the chance to play it just the core version, and I've also had the chance to play it with the Ranch Expansion. And I have to say that the Ranch Expansion adds a ton to this game. Um, it, it's, it's great with three players. I haven't played it with four. Uh, three player was really great uh, both ways. Um, with or without the ranch expansion, but I really, really enjoy what the ranch expansion brings to this game. I, I like just the, the additional things we can do, the different avenues towards victory, uh, so that we're not all kind of doing the same thing. Some people could really concentrate on the ranch, others could, you know, concentrate on the saloon and branching, whether or not they're going to go vertical or horizontal. I really love the fact that we're able to stack these up and build these buildings vertically it really adds a lot to the game visually it, it, it looks it looks great on the table um, it's fun to do to be honest uh, and yeah I really enjoyed this game I think it's really well balanced I love the fact that the the Q 
cubes are the, the ticking end game, so you can kind of keep an eye on how many cubes are left to see how many turns you have left, kind of plan your strategy along that. And the fact that come the end of the, the game, when the game is triggered and the last cube is played, there's one final round and then the cubes are brought back into the game so that we can all kind of maximize what we have left. We can try and finish off a building that we haven't finished, you know, and try and score some points that way. Or, or you know, just try and do something to, to try and put ourselves over the top. Um, I love the ranch expansion. I love uh, the, the, the horses and the cows. I love, I love all these meeples. I love all the components. Everything looks really great on the table. I mean, even the meeples have little cowboy hats. Uh, the horses and cattle look great. Uh, the card artwork, the, the player board artwork, everything looks really nice. I really like the fact that we're using gold nuggets for the currency rather than cash coins you know a little different a little cool um, yeah I, I really enjoyed this game I, I'm I'm gonna play it again soon I'm hopefully gonna get four players to the table on in the next time um, and see how that pans out but yeah it, it's been great uh, I really enjoyed it I'm glad I, I went for the Kickstarter on it um, it was really worthwhile um, so that's my final thought on this game again um, I've been drinking the uh, the Hands Up Red Ale from Tin Whistle Brewing in beautiful Penticton, BC. We've been listening to uh, Dead Quiet from Vancouver, BC, one of my favorite bands at the moment. This is Saloon Tycoon from Van Ryder Games. You've been watching Metal Meeples and Beer. I am Rob himself. Thanks again for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. <laughs>